So I know that there are tons of fans for Jean-Paul Gaultier out there. Of course, the original Le Mal is one of my favorite fragrances composed by Francis Kirk John. I've owned it for many, many years now. I've gone through several bottles at this point. Well, this is a flanker of Le Beau, and this one is called Le Beau Le Parfum. Just came out this year, 2022 release. I'm excited to give you my thoughts on it, so make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin today's episode and I tell you all about Le Beau Le Parfum by Jean-Paul Gaultier, and I tell you about the notes, the performance, the versatility, comparisons, what I think of it, how it did on my skin, so on and so forth, I do want to start things off by saying that if you're a fan of fragrance-related content, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Hit that bell icon so you could be notified whenever I do upload future videos to the channel and I upload on a daily basis. And of course, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or if you took something of value from today's episode. Now with the original Le Beau, it had bergamot, coconut, tonka bean. Very simple note breakdown. In this fragrance, there's ginger, there's cypress, woodsy notes, pineapple, amber, sandalwood. It goes in a bit of a different direction. I would still compare it to the original. Now the perfumer for this is Quentin Biche and he is an amazing perfumer. He's done Delina by Parfum de Marly. He is such an accomplished uh, perfumer and he's done so many incredible works of art in the perfume industry. So this fragrance, I think, goes in a bit of a fruitier direction because it not only has coconut but it also has the pineapple and it has some other bright notes in the opening like the ginger that I mentioned earlier but it also has some warm ingredients in the dry down and of course you know whenever you think of parfum or eau de parfum or le parfum it gives you the impression that it's going to be a stronger version of the pre-existing scent and truly it is a flanker of Le Beau. They kept a lot of things intact, but you can sense that there are some other things added into the mix. And it does start to go in its own direction, but it still keeps it real and it keeps it honest. It is a true flanker. In any case, I'm excited to tell you my thoughts on the fragrance. Also compare it to some other fragrances on the market that I think it is similar to. But let's go ahead and start things off with the presentation. Now this fragrance is gonna give you a fruity introduction and I spent many weeks wearing this one. I wore it when I was on vacation. That's actually when I purchased it and I enjoyed that sort of tropical demeanor that it possesses. The coconut, the pineapple, the amber. It has a lot of these exotic tropical ingredients that I think work surprisingly well in the summertime when those notes are kind of evocative of the hotter weather and just being in this sort of state of relaxation and tranquility so the coconut is creamy and lactonic. The pineapple is juicy and tart. And you don't have the bergamot per se, although there is something effervescent happening in the opening. And then, of course, in the dry down, you have the amber and some woods and there's a cypress ingredient in here as well. So with a name like Le Beau Le Parfum, what has gotten stronger about it? I do think you're going to get a few hours of longevity over the original. I think the longevity of the original was already pretty decent as a it was. So for that to be improved by a couple of hours, you're looking at something that would fall within the eight to nine hour range. And I do think that that fruity aroma is a bit more enhanced or diversified in this fragrance. So you are gonna get a bit more of that pineapple. And at times it kind of reminds me of the pineapple that's used in Mile High by Parle Moi de Parfum. So that's a really strong pineapple based fragrance. Also, I would compare it to Fine Apple by Gallagher Fragrances, but this fragrance is still like 80% coconut, 20% pineapple. So you are gonna get more coconut than anything else. And in the dry down, you still get that creamy tonka bean ingredient that allows this fragrance to fall right in when compared to other really popular designer fragrances on the men's side of things like Versace Eros and Invictus Aqua. A lot of these fragrances have tonka bean in them. Even if it doesn't say tonka bean in the note breakdown, if you pick up the container and you look at the ingredients, it's gonna say coumarin and that's where it comes from, guys. So this fragrance has a lot of that happening in here. And in terms of the 
amber, there's a certain warmth about it. I feel like it's an amber accord that applies emphasis to the vanilla because there is a sweet undertone in this fragrance. So here's the thing, this fragrance kind of reminds me of Scandal also by Jean-Paul Gaultier. Scandal pour homme, I should clarify that. And it also kind of reminds me of Eternity Now by Calvin Klein. Now that's a flanker that came out a few years ago. I think I had done a review with my late friend Carlos and even Tiff Benson, if I'm remembering correctly. But I know there were a few people in that review or on that day when I wore it, I was out and about, we were walking the streets of Manhattan and it has that creamy tonka bean coconut smell. And that's kind of what you get in this fragrance. So I do think that in many ways it does possess a similarity to a lot of other fragrances that preceded it, one even being from the same brand, right? Scandal pour homme. But I do think that if you like the way that Le Beau smells and you're looking for a stronger version of it, Le Beau Le Parfum is going to do that for you. It's going to give you a few more hours of longevity. It's going to give you a slightly more complex smell and it's going to give you a more diversified fruity aroma. Now, my opinion is I've smelled this DNA before and it does kind of remind me, I got to be honest, it does remind me of of scandal pour homme. It does remind me of eternity now. I even compared it to very mildly to Mile High by Parle Moi de Parfum. So I wouldn't say there's anything in here that I've never tried before or anything with a super strong wow factor. However, if you are a fan of the original Le Beau. I think you might really, really like this one, especially as we start to get into slightly colder weather. I know this one has been out for some time now, but I think if you purchase this one when it came out, if it's been sitting on your shelf, you might wanna wait until September or October, depending on where you live. And I think you're gonna get your the bang for your buck right around that time of the year because it is a good performer. And I think this one is gonna do really well as the weather starts to get a bit cold. However, it's a bit of a contradiction because a lot of the ingredients in here remind me of being on vacation, like the coconut and the pineapple. So in any case, I do think it has this fun, playful, maybe even like date night and flirtatious vibe about it that does lean a little bit casual. I think there's a lot of other Jean-Paul Gaultier, fr Gaultier fragrances that can be worn very comfortably in a formal scenario, but I do think something about this is a little bit more youthful, playful, and fun. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. Now, first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, not the most unique fragrance on the market. I mean, I've smelled a lot of other fragrances that smell like this one. I do enjoy the smell. I think it's a pleasant smell, especially if you like the original Le Beau, not Le Beau Mall. That one was in like a like a blue, greenish, and white kind of a bottle. It has a lot of wormwood in it. If you're a fan of Le Beau, but you're looking for something a little bit more on the ambery side of things, a little fruitier, I think you'll really enjoy the Le Parfum version. In terms of the longevity, eight to nine hours, really good. The projection was never super loud, but it projected pretty consistently for about four or five hours. And it wasn't until that nine hour mark when it became a skin scent. In terms of the versatility, I think this one will probably apply to somebody who's a little bit younger because of the sweetness. I do think it leans a little bit more on the casual side of things. It's marketed for men. If you're a woman who likes the smell of pineapple and coconut, why not, I say. And I do think that this one is probably better suited for weather that's a little bit colder. I think if you overdose on it and it's really hot outside above 100 degrees Fahrenheit, it could be quite cloying, especially since it's a parfum concentration. And then in terms of the presentation, I like how the bottle is slightly darker and you do have that fade from, I guess, black to like a light blue at the bottom. My final verdict on this fragrance is if you're a fan of the original Le Parfum, you want something that has a bit more fruits in it, something that's a bit warmer with a couple extra hours of longevity, check out Le Beau Le Parfum by Jean-Paul Gaultier. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate your time and your support. If you enjoyed this review, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. It would mean so much to me. Hit that bell icon so you can be notified whenever I do upload these videos and I upload on a daily basis. And of course, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or if I gave you the opportunity to learn something new today. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.